לבקר חולים ולרפאותם. You have to visit the sick and to heal them or cure them. Now to visit the sick, that's a very simple thing to do, but to cure them, not always I can be the one who cures them, but maybe he's hinting to us that by me visiting a sick person, that brings the cure. I don't need to be a doctor or a healer. I just need to visit the sick, and that will bring already the cure. Okay, so practically I can do that. Put it on your, your diary once a month, once a week, Go visit the sick. It's a mitzvah, Bikur Cholim, right? It's one of the mitzvot that the Mishnah says that if you do it in this world, not only that you're getting your reward and your benefit in the world to come, you also get rewarded and benefited in this world. Oh, so it's a good investment. So he says, when you visit a sick person to heal them, kach yadua shechina, that's how we know, it's known that the shechina, She's lovesick from the unity that happens between the Shekhinah and Hashem. <clears throat> when we do a mitzvah, uh, the translation of mitzvah is a commandment, right? But the word in Hebrew mitzvah comes from the root tavta, to put two things together, to connect two things. So when I do a mitzvah, yes, I'm following a commandment, but what do I do? Is I create unity. The unity in the world below is between me and Hashem. When I do a mitzvah, I connect myself to Hashem. Can you imagine? You know, the greatest souls in Gan Eden cannot do what I do here in Israel. In, in, Israel, in, in this world. And if you do that, saying you tie yourself with the Malchut, which I'm simplifying what it means, tie yourself with the Malchut, is you do mitzvot. There's no other words to explain it. Somecha chole bechalia. Then you healing the sick one from their sickness. Who's the sick one? The Shekhinah. I slander, I cheat, I lie, I steal, I, whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah, I will have to set the consequences for my sin, but you have to understand, like the example I gave you with my kid, let's say, I don't want to say my kid, a kid takes the father's car, Trash it, smashes the car. Yeah, the kid will have to will go, maybe go to court or get their license revoked or whatever they'll have to go through. But the car, the property of the father is damaged. Kid doesn't have money. And then maybe the father will say, listen, you go and work and pay for the damage. Very simple, right? So uh, taking that example is that, yeah, if I do a sin, I will have to set the consequences of my sin. I will be judged by the master of the universe. I will be punished. Or we'll have to do whatever tshuva I need to do. But there's still damage somewhere. And the damage goes in the Shekhinah. Which I have to understand that it's in my responsibility to fix what I damaged. When a person becomes observant, what they are called Baal tshuva, Choser Bet tshuva, Tudu tshuva, however you want to call it, it's not only to be good. You know, I was taught the first stage when you become Choser B'Tshuva, stop with all the sins. Close, every, close the faucet. No more sins. Right? That in itself can take you a decade. First of all, as it says in the book of Tilim, Sur Mera, and then Versetov. First, move away from all evil. Then start doing good. Not so simple. That can take you years to sur mera. But the advice I got, close the faucet. Nothing bad. Stop everything. By stopping, you at least, you know, you're stopping the damage. Once you are able to stop the damage from happening, now start doing good. Now start building yourself. And later on, after you're able to do good and build yourself, now go start fixing all the damages. You can't start your tshuva by first saying, let me first fix all the damages. Because if you continue doing damages, then you didn't do anything. First, stop doing damages. Period. Wait a year, half a year, two years, ten years, whatever it takes. Now start simultaneously doing good. And once you reach to a certain maturity in your spiritual growth, then Hashem sees that you're ripe, then Hashem is going to start throwing at you all these challenges where you're going to have to and you will be required to fix all the damages. 
That's why I told you about Shuvah in the beginning, everything looks great. In the first year or two, everybody's great. All the rabbis are amazing. All the classes are amazing. All the community, everything is great and amazing. Till they get the reality check after a year or two or three or five. And then they figure out, wait a minute, that's not all amazing here. But I'm already all the way in. My feet are already stuck in the mud. Now, now let me try to figure it out. It's like the story I told you with the, that family that converted, that I told her, yeah, for the first two, three, four years of your conversion process, everything looks great. And the second you come out of the mikveh, the Yetzirah hands you the towel and starts all the challenges and all the difficulties and all the tests. And what happened the last five years? Oh, well, you're running, you're just preparing. Same thing here. First, damage control. Stop all the damages. Then start doing good, but only after that, when you're already, I call it, spiritually matured, then Hashem is going to start throwing all these challenges at you, because the challenges are going to be the ones who clean you, purify you, and that's how you pay your debt, basically, your spiritual debt. We spoke about it the other day. How do you end up sp uh, paying your spiritual debt? Because you will have to be judged for, for hardship, right? We talked about it many different times. What cleans the damage that you did? Yisurim. Hardship. That's how it is. There's no other way around it. You can't buy the heavenly court. There's no bribes here. There's going to have to be Yisurim. That's how it works. Yisurim kalim. Some of the hardships are minor. Somebody took your parking spot when you were in a rush. Or the Talmud says Yisurim can be that you put your hand in the pocket. You wanted to take out a... Uh, a quarter and came out a dime. That's also considered Yisurim. So, but there's many different types of Yisurim. How do you uh, go about to not have the Yisurim? That you bring Yisurim of Torah on yourself. Say, I'm going to take on myself to learn two hours at four o'clock in the morning. That's Yisurim. You lost sleep, you're tired. You know what it is to work, learn two hours? Sit and I'm learning. Right now what you're doing is listening. You're not learning, by the way. Not to chas shalom offend anybody. Now you are listening. It's not really learning. Learning is you taking the book and trying to figure it out by yourself and breaking your tongue with the language and going to 50 other books to look to the explanations and to put everything... That's learning. I told you already, I'm not so happy with the whole videos. And I, one time I met a guy in a lecture and he told me, I, I, do, I started repenting, I'm learning. He tells me I learn 10, 12 hours a day. Wow. Tell him, which yeshiva do you learn in? He tells me, well, I don't learn in yeshiva, I watch videos on YouTube. I said, YouTube is not a yeshiva. YouTube is a video hosting platform where you see videos. It's very nice that you're learning. My videos are also on YouTube. That's not how you learn Torah. You learn Torah with a book where you need to use your brain, where you need to break yourself to understand the question, the problem, the difficulty, the language. I'm now feeding you now the information. And again, I'm not saying that's bad. That's how I also learned. In the beginning, a rabbi would feed me the information. But really learning... That you have to figure it out by yourself. Now go to all the commentaries. Look for the commentaries, the hints, the issues. Putting them all together. So don't be discouraged. Don't turn the video off and say, Okay, that's it. Rabbi Nava said videos are not good. It's better than nothing. You're driving to work. Put a class on the way to listen to something. It's, it's going to go on the meter of learning Torah. Don't worry. But the rules in learning Torah is that if you did not understand what you learned... It's like as if you don't, didn't learn it and you're not getting the reward or the sachar of the Torah. Don't worry, when you watch a video, you get a reward for learning the Torah. But that's good, that's free time. That's when you need to get your, uh, your, your uh, information together. 